Buongiorno and welcome to another exciting condition of Meet Your Neighbor. My name is Ron Falcone. I had this idea back in 2006 to invite my neighbors and friends to come down to the studio so all of you could, could meet your neighbor. We have a very special guest today. He is the owner, broker of New Hope Realty and his name is Rich Kasouf. Rich, welcome to the studios. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, Ron. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Rich, I was wondering if you could maybe uh, just tell us something about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Rich Kasouf. I uh, am the broker of New Hope Realty and have been since 1987. I um, moved into uh, Brunswick in 1975 uh, and I had a real estate license prior to that. But um, I live here, I work here, and I have uh, been selling real estate in this area since uh, before 1975. Okay. Rich, um, can you, I mean, how did you describe, can you describe how you entered the, the realty field? What, what made you want to become a realtor? It's kind of funny. Um, I have a degree in computer programming and technology, and I was a systems programmer and analyst uh, while I was in my master's program. And uh, as some electives, I took a real estate law and okay. I took some other real estate courses that... Um, that uh, were very interesting and I had a cousin who uh, whose father owned a real estate company and I had called him one time saying um, uh, you know how are you doing and uh, let's go do something and and we had some we used to go out and, and do things <laughs> and all of a sudden uh, he said well I can't because I'm gonna be in Columbus about that date that we were talking about okay. and I said well what are you gonna do there and he said I'm I'm gonna take my real estate test I said, how do you do that? I've taken a bunch <laughs> of courses in, in my master's program uh, as electives, and, and uh, what do you do? And he said, well, I took this course and that course and another course. And I ended up um, saying, well, I, I've already taken those. He said, well, why don't you call down and see if you can take the test with me? So oh. I did, and we set, uh, I got into the test that he did. Uh, we drove down together. I, I passed the test, <laughs> and I was a, a full-time uh, systems programmer at that okay. time uh, and I said well now what do I do you know I'm, I'm already working <laughs> a full-time job I'm still in my master's program uh, and what do I do next and he said um, just put your license with my dad and go out and w in your spare time start selling real estate <laughs> and I enjoyed it so much that uh, one day I came home uh, and I, my wife uh, was there and I said, you know, I think I'm going to quit my programming job. She said, you uh -oh. have a degree in it? Never, why are you doing that? And I said, because this is fun. I'm really enjoying selling real estate. And um, we, uh, we were going to be moving into a brand new house uh, in the Brunswick area. I was showing properties out here already. Okay. And I stopped into the Bishop Realty office on the corner of uh, Route 303 and 42, okay. which was the old grocery store. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, I had met some people there, and they had all kinds of hustle and bustle, and I was coming <laughs> from a very small uh, brokerage company. And I, I really enjoyed uh, talking to these people, and, and they said, well, why don't you just come here? And I did. Uh, I, I transferred my license. I quit my job, my real job, okay. <laughs> and I started selling real estate. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you, been, have you been doing that now? Well, I, I got my license in, two th uh, in uh, 1974. Okay. And I started in the Brunswick area in 1975 full time. Okay. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Rich, can you, can you tell our audience who, who's wa probably watching right now in Brunswick and Brunswick Hills and maybe those who are watching on the internet, can you t just describe briefly wh what does a realtor do? A realtor is a, not only a salesperson but uh, has to uh, understand the laws of real estate. Okay. Uh, we have to understand people and their needs. We have to be a little bit of an engineer to understand what uh, housing and, and buildings uh, represent and how they, they function. Uh, we need to understand the finances that it takes for people to be able to buy property. Okay. Uh, that's residential, commercial, any type of property. So it's a, it's a fun field because you have to know so much and you get to meet a lot of people. And uh, many people really enjoy 
going through properties. Yes. Uh, I, I won't put a gender on that, <laughs> but, but some really enjoy seeing decorating and the like. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you alluded to this before in the past. What kind of classes or what kind of background do you need to have the, to be a realtor? I know you mentioned you have to take a test. Can you yes. describe more about that? There are uh, six basic classes that you take Okay. prior to taking your license exam, okay. uh, which uh, encompass financing and brokerage and sales. Uh, they, it, it has to, a lot to do with uh, the laws of the state okay. in particular because uh, you have to be licensed with a state and then there are some reciprocities, but Ohio doesn't have a, a whole bunch. Okay. Um, and once you take the six classes, pass your exam, then you have another 10 hours of courses to take uh, in the next year. Okay. And if you want to be a broker, you have to take, uh, I believe it's four more courses now. Okay. Uh, and then of course, you have 30 hours of continuing education minimum oh. every three years. So every three years you have to take extra classes just to yes. keep up with the yeah. latest trends in the realty field or broker right. field or? And, and in, in brokerage, Today, um, I, I normally have between 60 and 80 hours uh, okay. every three years. So okay. I'm taking, uh, you know, uh, between 20 and 30 hours a year of continuing education. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right now, the the housing market really isn't that isn't that great as we tape this today here. I was wondering, what advice would you give to people who are trying to sell their home right now? Well, uh, as you mentioned, uh, this is one of the um, worst recessions that we've had in a long time. Uh, recessions, uh, the, the recession of uh, 1979 through 82 was a little bit worse in a lot of ways. We had interest rates, and I remember this well, okay. uh, of anywhere from 17 to 25 percent, depending on if you were doing residential or commercial real estate. Um, I, I do both, and uh, so it really hit back then. Now we have a lot of people who are losing their homes, right. uh, a great deal of bank owned properties, although that is subsiding a little bit. And uh, what I would suggest is that people make sure that they stage their homes properly. Okay. Uh, that means uh, cleaning them out, okay. uh, neutralizing them through uh, decorating and making sure that they are uh, open, airy, without smell, without animals, okay. you know, a number of different things like that. Okay. and making them available. Um, not being, uh, today, there is such a selection uh, in numbers of people that are out uh, looking for homes and sure. the abundance of the homes that they're looking at that uh, we're not selling a great deal of properties at this time okay. as far as the numbers that go on the market. Uh, there, during the uh, uh, later 80s and parts of the 90s, we were okay. selling uh, almost 89% of the homes that would come on the market. Wow. Uh, that was pretty much the high. Okay. Today, we're selling anywhere from 35 to about 60% oh. of the homes that come on the market. That's okay. right. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I, I had run uh, a, a statistic. Yeah. We have um, uh, currently 25% uh, of the homes that have come on the market since the beginning of the year are sold. 67% mm. are still active and 9% are uh, under contract oh. waiting for to be transferred, and that's assuming that their financing goes through. Okay. Do you know how many homes in, in the Brunswick area right now are, are open? We have uh, 357 homes on the market, on the market. at the moment, okay. and um, that does not include multifamily. There are only three multifamilies right now, okay. uh, or commercial properties. Okay. Now, on the flip side of the coin, what, what tips would you give individuals who are trying to, to look for a new home, or look for, for a home that's, that's on the market there? What, what things should they specifically look at to, so that they can get a good deal here? Well, the first thing that you need to do when you're looking for a piece of property is be pre-qualified. Okay. What that means is that you contact a lender, you let them uh, look at your credit report, look at your income, and then you need to look at your budget. Uh, it's not unusual that you can either be overqualified or underqualified based on your own budget. 
many people think they go into a bank, the bank says, oh, you can spend $1,500 a month for a piece of property. And their budget says, you've been paying $650 a month, uh, so you may not be able to qualify for that because you can't pay it. So what you really want to do is uh, you want to not only listen to the bank that says, okay, you can qualify for this much, okay. uh, and under these types of programs, because there are conventional programs, there are first-time homebuyer programs, there are FHA and VA-backed programs, um, and depending on your own finances, that will depend on um, what you qualify for and what would be the best for you. Uh, but once you get qualified, then you can uh, look for the areas okay. that you like. The old adage, um, location, 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 is always very, very important. Yes. Because I you, you make money when you sell a home only because you bought it right. The conditions of property today are, are heavily affected by the economy, but that will change. My prediction has been since uh, about 2003 that somewhere around 2011 or 12, we should be in a, a, another boom market again oh, okay. based on uh, the age range okay. of the upcoming people that will be oh, buying. Okay. The, uh, the older adults are downsizing. The younger people are moving up because of families. Sure. And if you buy today, you have probably one of the best opportunities that I can remember in my 35 years of experience uh, that uh, of buying a really, really good deal. Uh, don't be afraid to make offers, um, but find something that you would want to live in for at least the next two to five years minimum. Okay. Uh, real estate is not a good investment for a short-term investment. It needs to be it's a long-term long investment. Long investment type of thing. That's correct. Okay. Um, go ahead. Okay. No, I was wondering if you could elaborate more on that. Oh, yes. Um, unfortunately, because of taxes, because of closing costs, mm -hmm. uh, it normally takes between two and three years just to make up the, the cost of buying or selling a piece of property. Okay. And, of course, if you're buying a piece of property on short term, you're not only paying your buying costs, but then you're paying your selling costs. Okay. And your selling costs normally will uh, involve... Uh, the realtor commissions and realtors do sell homes for more than by owners because uh, it it pre they present the properties to more people so you have a bigger market right um, but it, it, again uh, looking at it from a standpoint of long term and short term if you're going to pay to get in and pay to get out then you you need to make it long enough so that 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 makes sense uh, in, in essence, uh, you have to understand that a, a real estate never used to be a regular investment. Okay. In the early days, mm -hmm. it used to be a place to live as an alternative to renting. Yeah. And people didn't necessarily expect appreciation. We had a good uh, stint of about 22 years where r the value of real estate continually went up. And... The, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a surprise to most people who had been in the business for a long, long time mm -hmm. that we were due a fairly long recessionary period. Uh, as that was coupled with the plight of our economy, okay. it just got a little bit worse than many expected. Yeah. Rich, can you tell us what, what's a typical day uh, for you like? What's a typical day for a realtor? Is there uh, a typical day? Th there are very <laughs> few typical days. However, um, most full-time realtors are uh, f fairly early people. Okay. Uh, they'll get up between 6 and 7 in the morning. They'll start doing paperwork. Um, they will plan their day, uh, have appointments already set most likely. They'll do some prospecting. They'll do, do some follow-up. Uh, we are um, supposed to be experts at continually watching our transactions okay. and assisting our, our clients. So it's important that we uh, continue to watch everything we're doing as far as every, every person, every property is important. And um, so 
it's not unusual. Uh, back in the late 70s, when we were in a big boom, um, it, I was actually working as much as 120 hours a week. Wow. Uh, my average week now is probably below 70 hours. Um, uh, some people are part-time. Okay. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with being part-time. You just can't handle quite as much and maybe can't be quite as effective. Mm -hmm. Although I've known some very good part-time realtors. <laughs> Which, what are some of the typical issues that you, that you deal with? Uh, these days, financing is a, is a very critical issue, okay. uh, especially with as many bank-owned properties as possible as there are, uh, along with foreclosures. Uh, you're, we're dealing with what's called a short sale. A short sale is where someone owes uh, a mortgage of, let's take a, a, a number of $150,000, okay. and they can only sell the property and net out of that $130,000. Okay. That's a short sale. Okay. And the banks um, right now are working with us uh, to uh, sell those properties rather than buy them back. Uh, two years ago, we had a, a, a greater number of foreclosures than we do now because the banks, number one, received monies from the bailout, and number two, uh, are under the understanding that when they do buy them back, they are taking the risk of losing a, lo a whole lot more than if uh, the people stay in that property uh, and s try to sell it themselves. So um, right now, a, a great deal of what we do uh, is negotiating with banks. Okay. Uh, we deal with people uh, trying to help them not have what's called a deficiency judgment Deficiency judgments are where uh, if you sold it for that 130000 and you owed 150, the bank could, could take a judgment on you okay. and go after you for the, th the other $20,000. Okay. The downside to that was that prior to last year, if you had uh, gotten the debt relief of that $20,000 and the bank didn't come after you, you had to pay income tax on that oh. as regular income. Oh, so. The, the whole point is that uh, you, you're dealing with, uh, right now, a very short-term uh, benefit to be able to get out of property that you can't sell for the full price and not have to pay income tax on it okay. and, and have the banks uh, helping us to sell that property no matter what the price is. So it's a good time to sell and it's also a great time to buy because mm -hmm. those people who are now buying and looking for those great deals right. are looking also at two years or three years from now when we're going to be looking at as, as much as maybe a 30% increase wow. in our values. So the, the benefit is uh, tremendous in uh, buying and selling right now. And besides that, interest rates have just bounced up to a, a whopping 5%, uh, which is actually almost as good as right after World War II. <laughs> and uh, it's just a phenomenal situation. So uh, you can't lose by investing right now. Rich, what are your, what are your hours? What kind of hours do you work? I know you mentioned you're like, uh, like around 70 hours right now. But right. I prefer to take phone calls um, between 9 o'clock and about 7 o'clock at night. Okay. Uh, but do I get them other times? all the time. <laughs> People are not real shy these days to ask for what they want. Sure. Thank God we have a great deal of, um, of uh, electronic communication these days. Uh, and uh, that does alleviate a lot of things. We, we used to have to um, uh, pass around paperwork everywhere. We had oh, to have yes. to drive it. I remember when I first started, instead of having a multiple listing service, we had a book. And oh. in that book, were little sheets of paper that we got from our multiple listing service that had a picture and some details. Um, I used to um, be able to show people those pictures and even copy them, and that's, that's how they found out about properties other than by, by signs. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be able to write a purchase agreement on one sheet of paper. I used to be able to do a listing agreement on a half a sheet of paper. <laughs> today, uh, yeah, our, what's it like today? It's our purchase agreements average anywhere from 10 to 16 pages <laughs> uh, with the details that we have to have, sure. the mandatory uh, documents that are required by the state. 
along with our own uh, uh, contracts <laughs> and addendums. Rich, let me ask you some personal questions. Are you, are sure. you married? Do you have any kids? My wife would say I'm probably not married because I don't <laughs> see her enough. But um, yes, I'm married. I have three sons. Okay. Uh, one of my sons is licensed with me. Oh, okay. uh, another one was licensed and um, uh, took a full-time job that wouldn't allow him uh, to, uh, to participate in the, in the industry. So his license is on uh, 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 in escrow at Columbus. Okay. And I have a third son. My youngest graduated from uh, college last year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my last one. And, uh, and he is working at Cleveland Clinic. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And where, where do you live? You live in... I live in Brunswick. How I, long I've, have you lived here? I've lived here since 75. Wow. In the same house, <laughs> because I haven't had time to look for one myself. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I've, I've been here, and I've, I've uh, kind of grown up with a lot of the people here. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. Rich, for, for every guest, um, pretty much for every guest that I've had here on the show, I've always uh, uh, played a game of fill in the blank, okay? Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I blank. I really enjoyed myself. Did you? I, I like to play outside. Um, I like to work hard. I, it's kind of funny, but even when I was eight years old, I was making money. And <laughs> all the way since then, I, I've, been, uh, I've always had one or two jobs. I've enjoyed myself. That's good. And uh, I participated in sports um, from sixth grade on. Wow. Uh, and, and I uh, continued that in college. That's good. And then I coached in college. I was a fencing oh. coach. Oh. For 17 years at Cleveland State. That's um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, my head coach just died uh, last month. Oh, I'm sorry. He was 93, and uh, in fact, he was the he was the guy that taught Tom Hanks to fence oh, for wow. one of his movies. Oh. Uh -huh. And he was he was a world renowned. He was a Olympi uh, Olympian fencer for uh, a number of years and had uh, all kinds of trophies and everything. He was really great. Oh, uh, how, did you, how did you get into fencing? Kind of funny again. <laughs> I, I needed, in, in my first year of college, I needed some phys ed. Okay. And nothing else would fit in my schedule. Except fencing. Except fencing. <laughs> and after that, then I, uh, I started fencing and going into... Um, okay. I, I started going into uh, uh, the uh, active fencing around the, the country. Uh, with the team, and then after the team, uh, after I graduated, I, I became a, uh, an assistant coach. Oh, that's great. Under, under the <laughs> tutelage of, of, again, the head coach. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. Rich, the, the, the person or persons I admire most is our... I, I got to say, since, um, since 1980, it's been Jesus Christ. Um, perfect example of um, the way I want to live. He, um, he uh, I, I took him into my heart, and, and he's changed my life. And so that's number one. That's wonderful. And everybody else is kind of <laughs> second. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rich, when I retire, I blank. I'll probably be dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, they say that, that realtors never retire. They only become listless. Uh, <laughs> and so I will, uh, I'll probably stop taking listings and just talk to people a lot. Uh, I, I thank God I, I have been in uh, commercial real estate along with residential uh, for quite a long time. And uh, commercial real estate uh, takes a lot more uh, numbers crunching, okay. a lot more expertise. I, I did have a uh, construction company um, as I was a realtor and, and actually before. And so I know a lot about construction and uh, in the commercial and industrial end, um, it, that certainly comes in handy, especially uh, in the technological world of sure. today. Sure. And uh, so that's, uh, I, I just will continue to go as long as I can, because I really enjoy it. That's why that's my company great. is small, because I enjoy doing the work. Rich, can you give any neighborly advice to people who are are watching right now in Brunswick, Brunswick Hills, or, or those watching around the world on the internet? I would say that I would love well, I would work hard, and I would enjoy every single day, including today, because it may be your last. That's true. And, um, I, I just look forward to heaven, and I'm going to do my best enjoying today, <laughs> right now. 
Rich Kasuf, broker and owner of New Hope Realty. Well, uh, thank you for coming down to the studios thank today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Rich. Uh, my name is Ron Falcone. I am the host of Meet Your Neighbor. I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Kasuf for, for coming down to the studios today to, to talk to all of us. Um, once again, I'm, I'm a regular citizen of Brunswick here, who, um, Brunswick, which was named one of the top 10 towns in America for families, according to Family Circle magazine. Um, just wanted all of you to go out there and meet your neighbor. Once again, my name is Ron Falcone, and I am signing off. Ciao. <laughs>